In this video, I'm going to show you how to set up VS Code to be ready to program in C on a Windows machine. I like this set of tools for C programming because it works pretty cleanly and uses the common GCC GDB toolset. That means that the techniques that you learn will be transferable to a lot of environments. This is going to require installing two things. Sigwin is, and I quote from the website, a large collection of GNU and open source tools which provide functionality similar to a Linux distribution on Windows. In other words, it lets us run tools that are commonly found in Linux while our machine is running Windows. Once Sigwin is installed, we just need to install and configure VS Code. To install Sigwin, we start by going to their download page and picking the link for our version of Windows. Once that has downloaded, double click on it to run the installer. Give it the necessary configurations and when it comes up, click Next. Select Install from the Internet so that it'll download what we need. Let it pick the default root directory and don't change that because it'll be easier to make everything else find it if you leave it in that default place. The next thing it wants is the place that it can store stuff while it's working. This is stuff you probably won't need later, so you can just leave it in downloads and let it go away when you're finished with it. And just pick the default for how to talk to the internet. On this screen, we're picking where it's gonna download its information from. I have no idea how to know which of these is any better than the other, so I always just pick one and go. At this point, the installer will download just enough to get us started. This is showing the zillions of open source and GNU tools that Sigwin can have installed. We don't want them all. So we would search for the ones that we want. So if you search for GCC, under developer, we would like uh, GCC core. We can pick it by selecting the latest version instead of skip. The next tool we want is GDB. That's the debugger that we will use. Again, pick the latest version of the right thing. I don't like to pick the test ones. And the last thing that we need to get is the make tool. That will be used to build our C programs. When you click Next, Sigwin will start installing and it will download a lot of stuff. Once the installation is complete, you can bring up the new Sigwin program that was installed on your machine and enter the three commands that we need to test. First, we can try GCC and it'll complain that there's no input file, but that's okay, it knows the command. Same with make. GDB, we'll go ahead and open the debugger. We don't need to do anything with it right now, just need to say quit to get out of it. That makes sure that our Sigwin installation is correct. So now we're ready to download and install VS Code. We just need to go to the visualstudio.com download, pick Windows, and it'll start downloading it right away. That'll take a minute or two. When the download finishes, double click on the installer program. Agree to whatever they say. Pick the normal place to download it. Don't need to do anything special. I like a desktop icon. This installation is pretty fast. So just click finish and it'll start up VS Code for you. 
VS Code starts with a welcome screen, but I don't find it very useful. These buttons on the left are the main way that we navigate in VS Code. The top one gets us to the editor. We need a folder to work on, so I'll just create a new folder and call it Hello. Now, within that folder, I want to create a new file, so I click the New File button. And I'm going to name it with a .c extension, because that's going to tell VS Code that I'm working in C. That tells it that we want to put in some extensions, and we say go ahead and enable. Notice that it's moved to a different one of the buttons over here. That's where you get to what extensions are currently installed in VS Code. This one's all enabled, so we're ready to go. I go back to the editor, and I'm going to close out the uh, windows that I don't need. I'm going to use the standard code for uh, Hello World, so I have that ready to go. Paste it here. I'll put that in the description of the video. So now I'm ready to run it. Um, you can see it's downloading something, but that's okay. So I'm going to say Run Start Debugging. And it doesn't really matter. I picked the Windows one. We're going to overwrite all of this anyway. So that created a launch.json file. A launch file is how you start something. We need a very different launch file than the default one that it gives you. So I will give you this one in the description of the video as well. Now let's take a minute to look at what is in this file. So the launch.json file has all of the different configurations for how we want to run things. Right now we just have one, but you could put more of them in here if you wanted to. The one we have is named gcc.exe build and debug active file. We'll need to remember that because we'll use it later. It tells it that it's a launch and it runs this program. And this program is the one that is open in the window. They're going to, it's going to compile it, and then it's going to run the one that's open in the window. So that's what they mean by active file. Uh, we're going to not say stop at entry, but if we set that to true, the debugger would stop on the first line. And then there's some things to set up how it finds the files that it needs. Uh, this external console means that it'll pop up a window that will hold the output of our program. If we set that to false, it would not open up a different window. It would give it to us in VS Code. Uh, we're going to tell it that we use GDB to do the debugging, and here is the path to GDB. Now you notice twice here it's using this SIGWIN64 folder. That is the default installation of where SIGWIN went. If you put it someplace else, you're going to need to change these. Uh, there is some setup commands. And, uh, and then here, the most important thing in the rest of this is at the end of this, there is this pre-launch task. So it's going to do a task named gcc.exe build active file. So the launch is actually starting the debugger, but we want it to compile our code first. We define our tasks in a file named tasks.json also in this .vs code folder where the launch things are. And again, I have the te text for this and I'll give it to you in the description. But this is essentially says that there's a task that's a shell program that we're going to name gcc.exe build active file. And notice that's what we named the task at the end of the launch. It's going to run gcc in our sigwin folder. And these are the arguments that go to gcc. Essentially, it's saying it's going to build it for the debugger, and it's going to store it in the file name.exe. The rest of this is essentially just setting up things that VS Code needs. The only other thing that's interesting is the is default set to true means that this is the default way that will run the build. If you do control B, this is the task that will be run. So now that we have everything set up, we're ready to run things. We're going to go over to the run debug navigation, but first we need to remember our launch title is GCC build and debug active file. We find that up here and pick it. And when we um, put the code that we want to do it to in the window, 
and then say go by clicking the green triangle, it runs and you'll see the window pops up and goes away. If we'd like the window to stay there, we can click right here to create a breakpoint, run it again, and it runs and it stops at that breakpoint. You can see if we had variables, this is where the variables would be. Here's the call stack and we can bring up the other window and see that the output is there. Our program ran. Up here at the top, you can see the debugger controls for step over, step into. We're just gonna say continue and the program is gonna exit. With that, our VS Code installation is complete and we are ready to code. If you have any trouble getting any of this to work, feel free to send me an email. I'd be happy to help.